Sure. Test one, two, three. Test one, two. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Father Rick Walsh, the pastor of St. Paul the Apostle Church. And today I am wearing red uh, because today we commemorate St. Charles Luanga and his companions. These were martyrs in the late 1800s, martyrs in Uganda, an Anglican and English settlement at the time, uh, but there was a, uh, a king, a ruler, who was very interested in power in exerting his power over people, and uh, so therefore we are celebrating the resistance of these uh, men in holding to their own faith and morality. We these days live with uh, a lot of sense of uh, disempowerment and frustration uh, and so we remember especially for our own day uh, our prayers are joined with those of this great saint this martyr Charles Luanga we take time as we begin this celebration to call to mind our sins ways in which we have perhaps thought or felt bad things toward others and uh, let us ask the Lord to strengthen us with pardon, peace, and mercy, that spirit of mercy 
in our hearts. You came to heal those who are sorry for their sins. Lord, have mercy. You call us to follow you, even if it means hardship, even if it means sacrifice. Christ, have mercy. And you continue to assist us with your spirit, sending your spirit to us to help us in our efforts to be your body, members of your body here on earth. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field, which is your church, watered by the blood shed by Charles Lawanga and his companions, may be fertile, and always yield you an abundant harvest. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the promise of life in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my dear child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to the Lord, nor of me, a prisoner, for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On account of this, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed. For I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord I, lift I lift up my, my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. To you, to you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven have been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures of the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. They're like angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses and the passage about the bush, how God told Moses, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. I think our uh, readings today point out to us the need to kind of get that big picture. Uh, In our gospel passage, we have the Sadducees who are men of faith, but they're men of faith who really focus on uh, the here and now. They're not thinking about uh, heaven. They don't believe in a resurrection. They don't believe in that. They're very much focused on here and now issues, and they think it's all so silly to be looking beyond. I would say that's pretty common for a lot of people. We all get pretty busy in life and we get, keep our nose down to the grindstone, as we say, and we don't often elevate ourselves or allow ourselves to be elevated. You know, we read this uh, beginning of the letter of Paul to Timothy. So here he is writing to his good friend who he baptized, uh, had a good relationship with, and he's left him in trust trust in him to be in charge of a church after he leaves. So you know that Timothy is important to Paul. And here's the beginning of the letter, and it's so beautiful. He has these wonderful images uh, that, you know, how, you know just the, the sense of Paul and to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, peace from God. I'm grateful to God whom I worship with a clear... He goes on and on. This letter is not how we write a letter today. Our letters are usually, dear so-and-so, and and we kind of get right to the point. We don't have these long introductions and praising God or what have you. It's a thing of the past, particularly 2,000 years ago, but also more recent. And I share with you now that I have a letter in my office that I have had framed because it's very dear to me. It is a letter written by the PP, and that uh, in Irish is the parish priest or the pastor, to my grandfather when he came over to America in 1922. I take it back, 1927, 1927. And he wrote him a letter after my grandfather gave him some money to help the church back home in County Galway. And the letter was this beautiful use of the English language, and it goes on to describe my grandfather and what he means to this priest. And then he goes on to describe how he knew very well and worked with my great-grandfather, my grandfather's father, and all the things he did in County Galway at the time of the land reform that was needed by the, the injustices of the British Uh, government over the Irish. And uh, very beautiful. It's a testimony. He even says it at some point. This is a testimony that I give to you for you to hand on to your sons. And he goes on to name my uncles. So this pastor really knew my family. But I just thought it was so lovely that he took the time and he writes in a beautiful way, the, the, the take, take the time to write the letter by hand in a way that everybody used to. We've lost that, haven't we? 
lost a lot of that. We're very quick. Today, a lot of our folks, including myself, are texting. It's very quick. And I find oftentimes emails and texts are a very poor way to communicate. They're very good for sharing information, but they're not good for communicating, for helping us to be one with one another, which is what communicating means. And that's what the letters have done, these letters from Paul and letters in the past, a way to celebrate. And they lift up our eyes. They give us that big picture of why we're here and what a person means to us. Ah, that's an art that I feel sorry about that we've lost. In this day and age, we constantly need to lift up our eyes so that we can keep focused on things down below. But Charles Luanga today that we honor is such a character from the 1800s in Africa who was being asked to perform sexual things and such that he was against his faith, of course, his morality, and others were being forced into it. And these were not all Catholic, by the way. A lot of these folks were Anglican. And um, so we took them along as well, calling them saints, even though they're from another communion. Uh, it's, a, it's a celebration of that sense of his lifting up his eyes and knowing there's something bigger. There's something greater here. In our world today, we need that because we can get bogged down uh, in, in the minutia and get bogged down in other things. Lately, our own country with our struggles of race relations and struggles with how government looks at that and certain persons are responding or not responding but reacting, uh, we have examples in our own faith. In the Anglican faith, we have the example of Bishop Buddy the other day writing very articulately, very beautifully, her protest of what uh, the president did in her church, as well as our own Bishop Gregory of Washington, D.C. yesterday wrote a fine little note, again, not a grand, long thing, but to the point as the bishop of the church of admonishing those who uh, do things in a way that are not more politically motivated, not far-sighted, not looking at the big picture, and not remembering God. So let's pray for that grace today in our world, in our own life, that uh, maybe even, maybe we can honor this by writing a letter by hand to someone you love and to take the time to actually write it out, ponder it, sit with it, maybe take a couple of days. I'm sure Paul didn't compose this overnight. It was probably well thought out and took him several days. Pray about that and pray for the grace of God to communicate in holy communion that we celebrate, that sense of being one with each other and with God. So at home, would you stand with me now as we pray? We pray for, uh, as we always do, our church. We pray for our church in this country at this time, uh, for leadership in the church, for those who are entrusted with leadership in this very difficult time to take prophetic stance, to take a stance of morality that ties us to our faith and to urge us and to inspire us to grow in the ways of that faith, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our nation. We pray for the civil unrest that's ongoing. We pray for persons to listen to one another, to take time to hear each other's stories, to be able to walk in one another's shoes. We pray for a sense of uh, reconciliation and for justice as well as peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have suffered greatly and who are sick uh, right now because of the COVID virus. We pray for those who are uh, in hospitals or at home uh, still either dealing with that directly or recovering from a long illness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for persons who are having a hard time forgiving, for those who have been hurt either in this particular subject matter of uh, race relations, perhaps just one-on-one -on -one in family with nothing to do with race, but just hurting because of some uh, pain, something that was done to them, said to them, for the spirit of God to come into hearts and minds to help assist others in forgiving, we pray to the Lord. We have no uh, particular intention at this Mass today, so. Uh, just right now, let's take some time and call to mind those things that we each need and desire of God.
These we pray to the Lord. And lastly, let us pray for all our deceased loved ones, family members, and friends. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear these prayers that we bring to you this afternoon, those spoken aloud, and the many, many prayers we speak to in our hearts in silence. Help us. Help us always to open our minds, to lift up our eyes to you, as the psalmist re reminds us to do, to be able to hear your word, to nurture it within, and to do your will. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that these, our gifts, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs of Uganda the grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the blood of your blessed martyrs, Charles Luanga and his companions, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble you bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the men and women who serve you. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Holy Martyrs, including Charles Lawanga and his companions, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we pray together now the words Jesus our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer those around us a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment make us, in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and charity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ending now. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Just one final comment that the uh, uh, church is open from 9 o'clock to 11.30 each weekday, Monday through Friday. The church is now open to come in and pray. Uh, we're in the first phase of reopening, and hopefully, please God, it will... The phases will move along and soon we'll be celebrating Mass together.